He didn't say, I will show mercy to those that are prayerful, to those that are fasting a lot, to those that have suffered too much. God does not show mercy to those that suffer too much. If not, the first place he will start is with those living under the bridge. He will not show mercy to those that cry too much, not those that are more sick. If not, everybody in the hospital will be healed because I will show mercy to whom I choose. Mercy might be wicked, it might be an alert, it might be a thief, it might be lazy, it might be strong, it might be foolish, it might be wise, but I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. In God, there's no scarcity in finance, in growth, in wealth, whatever you are believing God for that seem to be lacking in your life. In God, everything is in abundance. The time Jesus and his disciples were moving and they forgot to carry bread. And he told them, beware of the living of the Pharisee. And they said, oh, it's because we didn't bring bread. He said, are you still dull of understanding? Have you forgotten when we fed 5,000 people, how many leftover we had? God does not create anything without providing leftover. God does not provide anything without making available for the leftover. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, scarcity mentality, fear, doubt, unbelief, making you not to assess the abundance of God, you are rescued for me today. I say be rescued. Be rescued. In Jesus' name. One way to assess God's abundance is to agree that all what God has is yours. John 17, 10. And he said, all mine are yours, and all yours are mine. There's no other way. You have to leave this realm. All scripture are inanimate until a man of faith begins to leave it. Then there will be manifestation. Inanimate means all scripture are just there. You know, this show, Children Go, and you see somebody putting on like um, Spider-Man. Huh? Or they're putting on uh, Barney and the person begins to dance and it looks as if it's real Barney that is dancing, the, the real animal. All scriptures are like that. When you put it on the floor, that thing cannot move until somebody enter it, begin to leave, move his hand, shake his head. Then you think that thing has life. All scriptures are dead until a man of faith begin to leave it. Jesus was the one that said, the later kill it. It is the spirit that gave it life. So the spirit is talking about the spirit of faith. When you pick up a scripture and you have not seen the manifestation, you begin to leave that scripture, speak like that scripture, think like that scripture, then you will be able to manifest that scripture to reality. That is what meditation does. When you keep on meditating on a scripture, you are giving life to that scripture. Scripture receives life when it's being meditated on, not when you hear it. So he said, all mine are yours and all yours are mine. Say, my father, I accept, I believe that all mine are yours and all yours are mine. In the book of Ephesians 1, from verse 15, when these people gave their life to Christ, the Lord spoke to me and said, if all of you, all believers, should understand what redemption is all about, your prayer will be filled with asking and be filled with thanking. If you understand what redemption did for you, what redemption have made available for you, your prayer will be more of thanksgiving than asking. So if your prayer is still more of asking, then you will not understand what redemption did. Paul had a group of souls, which are the Ephesians, those in Ephesus. He said, therefore also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, he said, I do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers that what that our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him 
that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints saying God should open your spiritual eyes to see what has been made available for you in redemption if you understand what has been made available for you in redemption you will know that you have hospitalized sickness you have murdered death you have given charity to poverty I, am I talking to somebody say I hospitalize sickness it's not sickness that will hospitalize you it's you that hospitalize sickness say I murdered death I gave charity to poverty he said that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened May God open your understanding this season. It's understanding that makes you outstanding. What you see is what makes you a show to your generation. What God shows you. Pray. Desire that God should show you. Moses prayed one prayer. Oh Lord, show me your way. David prayed a prayer. He said, oh Lord, teach me your way. There is a way. When God show you his way, then you have come to your way out. There will be way out in every situation in your life. That is the prayer you should pray this season. Oh Lord, show me your way. Can you say it one to go? I'm not hearing you. Open your mouth and pray that prayer in one minute. Oh Lord, in this service, show me your way. Exodus 33. Amen. From verse 13. Maladia Kavazo Prelata. Shektame Zigzevalaktomereyagash. Now, therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me your way. This is the prophet Moses that divided the Red Sea, still asking, I have seen your signs. I have seen your wonder, but that is not enough. Those are your acts. Show me your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight. The more you know his way, the more you find grace in his sight. Not the more hardworking you are, not the more fireful or the more fasting you do, the more you know him. He said, and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, this was God's response. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Verse 19. God started showing Moses his way. See what God said. I want you to mark this scripture. This is what we want to learn today. He said, then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. Now, this is the most touching word in this life. Please, Whatever you will do today, don't forget this. God said, I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So meaning God can sit down in heaven and just look at somebody and say, I want to help you. He didn't say, I will show mercy to those that are prayerful, to those that are fasting a lot, to those that have suffered too much. God does not show mercy to those that suffer too much. If not, the first place he will start is with those living under the bridge. He will not show mercy to those that cry too much. Not those that are more sick. If not, everybody in the hospital will be healed. The perfect one came to a place where there were a multitude of sick people, blind, lame, and he chose only one man. Because I will show mercy to whom I choose. The person might be wicked, he might be an alot, he might be a thief, it might be lazy, it might be strong, it might be foolish, it might be wise, but I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. I am praying for somebody this season. When God is just looking for who to show mercy, let him find you. This is the most powerful scripture about mercy. I will show mercy whoever I choose. Just as in the book of 2 Samuel 9 from verse 1. 
David was representing God here. A king just woke up one morning. He said, is there still anyone left in the house of Saul that I may show kindness? Ah, everybody, people, there are many people in your palace. You have family members. You have cabinet as a king. You have soldiers. You didn't see anyone. You just say, who should I show kindness in South Africa? God just woke up one morning and said, who should I show kindness? In your father's house, in your family, in your city. Now, among Saul's children, he said, who, who may I show kindness for the sake of Jonathan? Mm -hmm. And there was servant of the house of Saul, whose name was Ziba. So when they heard him, the king said to him, are you Ziba? He said, at your service. Then he said, is there not still someone in the house of Saul to whom I may show kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, there is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. Oh God, I am helpless. I need your help. When God is searching your family or searching a city or searching a nation to find who to help, he does not find the strong. He does not find the mighty. He does not find the most clever. He, he does not find the most skillful. He finds the weakest among us. I'm seeing you today. God is searching in your family. And he found you. God is searching in your continent. He found you. God is searching in your city. He has found you. In the name of Jesus. Say, oh Lord. I desire your mercy. Show me mercy. You see, one way to ask for this kind of mercy because you can just be sitting there and say, oh Lord, look at me. No, you ask for mercy. You, you see, you, if you need mercy, you will desire it. You desire what? Oh, uh, not hard work. Say, Lord, I desire your mercy. In, in the book of Osses 6 from verse 6, even God said it with his mouth. He said, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Not 20 minutes of prayer, 20 minutes of fasting. I desire what? I desire. So for you to obtain mercy, you will desire it passionately. You will be hungry for it. This year, don't desire car. Don't desire house. Don't desire marriage. Don't desire children. Desire mercy. Are you hearing me, somebody? When mercy locates you, he brings everything you are looking for. Oh my God. Say, oh Lord. I desire your mercy. Show me your mercy this year. Show me your mercy this season. Let me obtain your mercy. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. You will be identified this year with mercy. You will be chosen by his mercy. Pray that prayer. Kiza barati mukaba, bele de sizo barakina no shada. Lato beze bron delegada barato melakati. Let me obtain your mercy. Let me obtain your mercy. I desire your mercy. I crave for your mercy. Pray for the Lord to give you that mercy you have been looking for. In Jesus' name, one is what? Desire. Say desire. Yes. Desire it. Just as a naked man, desire clothes. As a hungry man, desire food. As a tasty man, desire water. That is the kind of taste you have to generate to obtain mercy. Listen, you see, your, your heart is wandering around, looking for many things, desiring many things. Mercy is the answer. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Number two, you have to ask for mercy. Ask for it. Mark 10 from verse 46. He said, now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude 
that don't understand the mystery of mercy. They are just following Jesus. These are to assess all mine are dying that I'm telling you. Because we can be many following him. That Jesus that was walking there had the ability to heal, to give sight to the blind. Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples, as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude. Don't be among the multitude. What signify the multitude from those that obtain happiness and the joy of the Lord is those that can discern the word called mercy. Because there can be many churches, many believers, many pastors, many prophets, many prayer warriors, but few people understand the mystery of mercy. He said, multitude. But blind Beatimus, the son of Timus, sat by the road begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and said, Son of David, have mercy on me. It's one thing to ask. It's another thing to desire. Now, if he was just asking, he wouldn't have obtained that mercy because this is number one. He asked, verse 48, many want him to be quiet. You see? But when you ask, life or position tell you to be quiet. Your desire will keep you asking. Oh, you are not hearing me. Desire fuel the asking. You don't stop because you already desired it. You are not just asking because they told you to ask. A young boy was playing around and the mother said, sit down, sit down. So the boy, by force, sat down. And he told his mother, I am sitting, but I'm standing inside. Because he was, he was jiggy jiggy. They forced him to sit down. He wanted to play. He said, Mama, I'm sitting. But inside me, I'm still standing. You cannot hold me bound. Something is still ruminating inside of me. So they are telling him, shut up. He said, no, I need mercy. Because the mercy is not from the mouth. It's from the heart. I am praying for you this season. From the depth of your heart. May the mercy of God begin to cry out. He said, they warned him to be quiet. He cried out all the more. The more the affliction is coming, the more the opposition, the more you should cry for mercy. The more it seems as if the answer is not coming, cry for mercy. And I'm praying for you this season, you will obtain mercy. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, be of good shape. Rise. He's calling you. He's calling you to come out of team mess. He's calling you to your goodness. He's calling you to forgive you. Now, we want to realize that today our topic is elected by mercy. Elected by mercy. More of your mercy, oh Lord. That's what you'll be asked for this season. I said elected by what? In this kingdom, you are not choosing because you desire to be chosen. You are choosing because God showed you mercy. In 1 Thessalonians 1.4 Knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. You are already elected. 1 Peter 2 from verse 9 He said, but you are a choosing generation. So to be elected is to be chosen. For you to be elected means you have been chosen. You have been nominated. You have been appointed. You have been named. That's what it means. You are a choosing generation, a royal priesthood. You didn't do anything. There was no work there. There was no effort that came from you. He said, a holy nation. His own special people. That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, for you to understand what it means to be elected, you have to know the opposite of being elected. The opposite of being elected is rejected. In case you are facing rejection here, yeah, it's you that thought you have been rejected. Bible say you are choosing. I say you have been what? Yeah. Bible say you have been appointed. You have been nominated. 
If God have chosen you, who is rejecting you? Even if you go and apply for a job, they did not accept you there. It's because they are not fit to undo you. Tell them, open your eyes. <laughs> Many people, he said, they rejected me here. Yeah? My parents rejected me. My father rejected me. David said, even if my father and my mother forsake me, you are with me. Do you understand that? I want you to remove that mentality of I was rejected. Be it from your parents, at school, marriage, relationship, whatever area of your life you have been assuming, feeling, thinking, giving life to rejection. I came with a word for you. How can you that have been elected, choosing, be rejected? God said I should tell you. You have been elected and not rejected. Amen. Tell neighbor, I have been elected, not rejected. Let me teach you how God does his own election. It's very, very painful. <laughs> That's why I said it's painful to know how. You have, the, the pain is not for you. It's for those he does not elect. It's a movie. God is acting a movie and you, you are acting inside the movie. I want to just show you one scripture and we are going to read it gently. It's going to open your eyes to how God behaves. God's ways. Romans 9 is the beginning of that movie. Romans 9 from verse 10. God does not choose the qualified. First of all, you see the book of 1 Corinthians 1 26. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble accord all of you that are Christian, we we are not the most wisest in the flesh. We are not the most strongest. It's a mighty. Not us that are noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things. I'm one of the foolish things. One woman that is there, when we were still 2017, when she came here with her, that I was very, very old. 2017, I was old. She came. She saw one, one old boy preaching there. And she was looking at me like, according to her, because she came to testify. Then she said, when I came to the place, I was just, I look at him from head to toe. Is it this small one that wants to help me? Then, it didn't take long. She got a testimony. So when she was testifying, she now said, the scripture now makes sense to her, that God used the foolish things. So I was the foolish thing. May you be a foolish thing in the eyes of men. Because God does not use wise things. He used foolish things like us. Foolish things like... So I, I, I accepted that I'm, I'm one of the most... In fact, I'm the most foolish things on this earth. He said, God, choose, 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 appoint, elect the choosing things of this world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things like us of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. He said, and the base things, the lowest. Oh, I'm the most foolish things. I'm the most weak. I'm the most base. If you think you are too qualified, then you don't fit in here. You, you are not qualified for mercy. If you think you graduated, you too no book. Your certificate is too much. You can speak big grammar when they call people to <laughs> when you go for job interview, you begin to speak to your boss. I am here to flag about this business. I am so tremendous, bogotious, and sanctimonious. I will take this company to the threshold that everyone that sees it will desire to want to partake. Interfere, intertwine. <laughs> Many people that are speaking such grammar, after they finish speaking that grammar, they'll say, Brother, give me 50 rounds. I need to go to somewhere. 
<laughs> I pray for you. This year, may God find you among the foolishness of men, among the weakest of men, among the base of men. I may show you mercy. This year, whether you like it or not, God is visiting you and he will show you compassion. He will show you mercy. You have been elected for mercy. If you believe it, shout a lot of amen. He said he has chosen the best things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing, the things which are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Thank God our God is like this. If not, people like you and I will not be qualified. In case you are seeing yourself, that time is against you. Ah, years are against you. Things are behind for you. You are fit into this. Are you hearing me, somebody? Ah, uh, if you are thinking people have gone ahead of you, you were in school, you were the poorest in school, you could not finish school, you start business, is not working, your brain could not carry anything, they left you in marriage, you don't have a child, or you can't even feed, or in job, nobody take you serious. God is saying, I should tell you, you are in his list. Ah! Uh, somebody said, thank you, Jesus. This was what Paul understood when he was trying to ask God, deliver me from this weakness. God said, my grace is sufficient. So he now said, wow. So I have to glory in my weakness. I have to glory that I'm the most foolish among men. It's for my benefit. Ah, in the sight of God is for your benefit. That they think you are the lowest in the sight of God is for your benefit. They thought you are foolish. In the sight of God is for your benefit. They say you are going to church for nothing. In the sight of God is for your benefit. All things work together for good. Are you hearing me somebody? Oh my God. Somebody say thank you Jesus. <laughs> See that? Is what I'm telling you. I said, if you know what you have been elected to receive, there will be few asking in your prayer. There will be more thanking. You will not be crying when you see things are not going the way you want. The way people want it to go. The way it's going well for others is not going well for you like that. You will not be crying. You will be thanking. So thank God. Now, I, I, are you understanding what is going on here? So that is why if you are David, when God is looking for a king in your family men will choose others ahead of you even Samuel the prophet came to the house he saw the biggest the most muscular the most intelligent the captain in army he said this is the Lord's anointed God said no 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 you are seeing it wrongly he said for the Lord does not see as men see if men call you wise God call you foolish. And if men call you foolish, God call you wise. If men call you poor, God call you rich. If men call you small, God call you mighty. If men call you a slave, God call you a king. For the Lord does not see as men see. I have a good news for you this season. I have a good news for you this season. What men have said about you, God wants to prove them wrong. Say today, many of you are seeing a shock to your family. You are seeing a shock to where you came from. God said, I should tell you, He has not started with you. Ah. Is, it, is it some of you don't know? That in the spiritual realm, in your family, they have already written you off. Put a barrier. If I buried you in their own, you don't know that God have embarrassed all their plans. There are things God is doing that we don't know. Some of us don't know that our enemy, they are still surprised. How is this person surviving? We thought we tied all his money. 
We thought by now he are supposed to come and be begging us for food. We thought by now they are supposed to, he's supposed to be dead. How come he's still alive? Elected by mercy. I said elected by mercy. Elected by mercy. Ah, uh, this year, this year, you are experiencing supernatural mercy. I said you are experiencing supernatural mercy. You will manifest mercy. You will produce mercy. You will deliver mercy. You will be rich by his mercy. You will be fruitful by his mercy. In the name of Jesus. Say I receive the mercy. In the name of Jesus. Even David's family did not consider him qualified. That is God explaining, I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. So in the whole of Jericho, God did not find a baby to save. Baby, when he wanted to destroy Jericho. He didn't save innocent baby to save. He went to save Rahab, the prostitute. Ah, I will show mercy on whom I want to show mercy. In the whole of Israel, God did not find a woman that David lineage and Jesus lineage should come. He went to look for roots from Moab. Somebody that was brought forth from the ancestry of incest. Sisters slept with their father to produce the family of Moab. God went to a defied, corrupt background to pick a woman that Jesus should come through. Elected by mercy. Is it you that is looking at yourself like this? Thinking they rejected you. Thinking you are condemned. You are the one that God is looking for. You are the one God wants to use. You are the one God has found. I pray for you this season. I speak to you. You will be an envy to many. You will be envied. Listen, I'm not exciting you. What I'm saying is what you are. And that is what you will reflect. That is who you will be. Whether you like it or not. Whether you are looking at me as if you are watching movie. You are looking at me as if you are watching Santarama. As the word is coming out of my mouth. The Bible says the words that are coming out of my mouth. They are spirit and life. The spirit of mercy is entering you. He said the word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return void. But it will do that to which it was sent. Listen, the words that is coming out of my mouth for you this season. Is that God have elected you for mercy. And that word will not return for it. It will fulfill it. In the name of Jesus. I understood. That God is a storyteller. And I prayed one prayer. Oh Lord. Make me to play. The best part in your movie. I don't want to be the boss. I want to be the actor. I don't want to be the one they will kill during the movie. Or I don't want to be the one that was fanning the king from the beginning of the movie to the end. I don't want to be the village hunter that the lion kid. I want to be the prince that was made the king. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> Listen, when you read your Bible, everything you are reading there, God is a storyteller. Yes. He is telling a story of mercy, love, and destruction. Mercy, love, destruction. So I choose to play these two roles, mercy and love. I don't want to play the role of destruction. Do you read your Bible where God said to Moses, I have hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Ah, why? What did he do? What did I do? Somebody was just on his own. You are not hearing me. The innocent man was on his own. Sitting on his throne, they had a meeting about him. They said, let us make this man act strong. God said, so that he can reveal his power. By somebody's act being added until his son died. May you not act destructive movie. Am I communicating to you? Now, I have a good news for you. See, that's why I say God has elected you. He has chosen you. That's, it. that's why I say you are a, you are a choosing generation. 
there is a royal priesthood. That's what you'll be acting. A holy nation. God's own special people. So everything you are doing in life, you will be special. Let's read the book of Romans 9. You will see how this movie went. Very, very touching story. Romans 9. It's a long scripture that we're going to read. I just pray you have this understanding. Romans 9, 11. God is using humanity to tell a story. So, this is in pray. We are praying you know, that will be <laughs> the story of mercy. Are we there? Romans 9. From verse 11. Yet, before the twins were born, or had done anything good or bad, yet before the twins were born, meaning two children that they have not given birth to, God wants to show you how he appoints people. You know, in the physical realm, this is the two ways they appoint people. They appoint by election the more votes, isn't it? Yes, the more votes or the more strongest. The one that can bribe more in Africa is the one that can corrupt more. That lead. You are not hearing me. That's why whether you like go and cast all your votes, is the one that have the cash that is elected. Your vote does not count. But go and vote. So that you do not look as if you didn't do anything. It's the God is not involved in choosing who should lead in, this, in the kingdom of men. There is a millennial kingdom that is coming after this that we all we become rulers, kings. You don't know what is going to happen after the rapture. That's what is going to happen. You are not, don't think uh, you are a Christian. When you die, you go to heaven. Heaven is not meant for you. <laughs> heaven is a transit. We only stay in heaven for some years. Then we'll come back again to this earth. It's called New Jerusalem. Oh, some people say, oh Lord, take me to heaven. Oh, take me to heaven. Heaven, heaven, heaven. If you reach heaven, it will be boring to you. You know, when a king gives birth to a king, that's why I say he's king of kings. Two kings cannot be in the same place. In this earth here, yeah, you can elect a president, he's the king. He's a moment, he's a king temporary. When after election, he has dethroned him, then the kingship God gave you is forever. It's an internal kingship. And two kings cannot rule in the same place. You know, what brought about colony, colonization was the king of Portugal gave birth to a son. The son was a prince because whenever a king is, the other people there will be princes. But God is didn't destined us to be prince. He called us king of kings. So now when the king of Portugal gave birth to a son, the son said he wants to be king. And you can't be king when your father is still alive. So the father went to colonize Brazil and sent his son to Brazil. So his son became king in another domain. You and I were with God and he has predestined you to be king but we can't be king together in heaven so he has to send you here. <laughs> so you don't understand. You don't know why you are here. You are king in here. You are what? Oh, you are not hearing me. You are what? Yes, you were sent here to be king. In. A teacher was asking everybody in school, say, what is your, what does your father do? This was saying, my father is does farming. They asked, so what does your father do? He said, my father does is, is teaching. So this young man saw everybody answering, teaching, farming, nursing. And his father is a king. He said, what does your father do? He said, my father is king. In. Are you hearing me? Now, when that young boy that went to Brazil, whenever he's there, he's a king. But whenever he goes back to Portugal, he becomes a prince. You see that? If the father goes to Brazil, that boy becomes a prince there. Once the father leaves back, he becomes a king. So when we die, we go to heaven. We are king here, but we become princes. Then he said, another millennium will come. 
another heaven will be made, another earth will be made. And in that new heaven and new earth, will be elected kings, presidents, and governors in that new world. Then you'll be leading angels. Do you know how many angels we have? Billions, trillions. May you not miss that word. Are you hearing me? That's why we should passionate that we meet God. That time you'll be a king that cannot be dethroned. It's forever and ever you'll be ruling with God. So I'm saying, before the twins were born, nobody have known good or bad. In order that God's purpose in election might stand. So he said, I want to tell you how I choose people, how I elect people. These two people have not done anything good or evil. Maybe if you say, uh, maybe uh, they, they have been born, they are old, maybe they are 18, 19, you say, this guy was so kind, that's why God favored him. This one was so hard working, that's why. He said, they've not done anything. He said, not by works, but by him who calls. She was told why the two babies were still there. The older we serve, the younger. Then he wrote again, he said, just as it is written, Jacob I have loved. Esau I have hated. So God ate Esau from the womb. It's not because he's seen Esau's future that it will be bad. No. He's trying to narrate a story of election. How I elect people. It's not because of what they do or what they, what they have not done. I decide. Jacob I have loved. Esau I have hated. He said, what then shall we say? Is God unjust? <laughs> it means, does God show partiality? He said, not at all. For he says to Moses, this is the secret, what we just read. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. It does not therefore depend on man's desire or effort, but God's mercy. May God show you mercy this season. Are you understanding mercy now? So one of the greatest prayers you'll be praying every day is, Oh Lord, show me mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, I have raised you up for this purpose. The reason you are acting a movie, that I might display my power in you and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Therefore, God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy and addings who he wants to add in. One, one of you will say to me, then why does God still blame us if he decides to show some mercy? So, if God says somebody is a higher killer like Adolf Hitler that was killing everybody, you think he's in that decide to do that? He's acting a movie. Even Osama is in 9-11. Or everything, all these killers you are seeing, all these suicide bomber and the rest, they are acting a movie. You think it's them that just did it? No. That's why I said, congratulations to you. Because God has elected you to act the story of mercy, not destruction. He said, one will say to me, then, why does God blame us for who resists his will? Mm -hmm. But who are you, O man, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed seem to him who formed it? Why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for noble purpose, meaning some clay, to be noble and some for common use. Saying the person that is an artist, that is a potter, can decide to make one clay for good use, another one for ordinary use. What if God, choosing to show his wrath and make his power known, bore with patience the object of his wrath, prepared for destruction? What if he did this to make the riches of his glory known to the object of his mercy? whom he has prepared in advance for glory. Even us, whom he also called, not only from the Jews, but also from the Gentiles, who us whom he called. As he says to Osi, I will call them my people, who are not my people, and I will call her my loved one, whom is not my loved one. So this mercy we are talking about, it is not obtained by your prayerfulness, by being strong, by being wise, by being the best in your class, by being beautiful. 
I tell you the truth that Esther was not the most beautiful person. She was just elected by mercy. It was not because of Mary was a virgin. That's why the Christ came out from her. She was elected by mercy. So God can sit in heaven just as David woke up one day and say, who should I show kindness? God can decide to show any of us kindness. And hear the good news? You have been choosing. So who is, who am I to boast? Say, who am I to boast? I am the one that have obtained mercy. Say it. Yeah. Who am I? The Bible says in the book of 1 King 1, from verse 5, Then Adonijah, the son of Ajit, exalted himself. You see, you don't, you don't choose to be, to, to, this is what God hates. When people want to qualify themselves, he humbled them. He said, Adonijah, this was one of the sons of David. He exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared for himself chariots and horsemen, 50 men to run before him. Mm -hmm. And his father had not rebuked him at any time by saying, why have you done so? He was very good looking. You see what is his qualification? That's why he exalted himself. He was very good looking. His mother had born him after Absalom. Then he confided with Joab, the son of Zura, with Abeta the priest, and they followed and helped Adonijah. But Zadok the priest, Benia the son of Joada, Nathan the prophet, Shimel, Ray, and the mighty men who belonged to David were not with Adonijah. And Adonijah sacrificed sheep by himself. You see what God said? I do not desire sacrifice, but mercy. And then he sacrificed sheep, oxen, fatted cattle by the stone of Zillard, which is by Erogel. And he also invited all his brothers, the king's sons, and all the men of Judah, the king's servant. But he did not invite Nathan the prophet. Don't do anything without inviting you. Nathan the prophet, Benian the mighty man, or Solomon his brother. Now, remember where Solomon was born. Solomon is the son of Bathsheba. And you know how David met Bathsheba. He killed the woman's husband. So the first child that the woman gave birth to died. So the second was Solomon. And the Bible says, and God loves Solomon. Imagine. Because Solomon was gotten by Wuruwuru. Nigeria call it Wuruwuru. Do you realize? Like, say Wuruwuru. Yeah. <laughs> David killed Solomon Rifada. Took the woman impregnated the woman the first baby died then the woman gave birth again and it was Solomon yet God said and God loved Solomon I thought that should be the one that should be rejected so this one that is mother married David properly exalted himself thinking in his mind a woman that was an adulteress that gave birth to a son called Solomon the son cannot be the king but God's ways are not our ways Verse 39. Then Zadok the priest took a horn of oil. Adonijah exalted himself. But Solomon waited for the anointing oil to come on him. Let God choose you. Don't exalt yourself. You didn't hear what I'm saying? Let God what? Say, let God choose me. Let God appoint me. Let God elect me. Yes, don't promote yourself. Don't exalt yourself. Allow God to choose you. Allow God to appoint you. Allow God to promote you. So when Solomon was anointed, then they blew the horn. And the king, meanwhile, that guy was already doing party, thinking he was a king. And all the people went up after him. And the people played the flute and rejoiced with, with great joy. So that the earth seemed to split with their sound. Now Adonijah and all his guests who were with him had it as they finished eating. And when Joab had the sound of the horn, he said, why is the city in such an uproar? 
While he was still speaking, there came Jonathan, the son of Abiathar the priest. And Adonijah said to him, Come in, for you are a prominent man, and bring good news. Then Jonathan said to Adonijah, No, this one is not good news. Our Lord King David has made Solomon king. You exalted yourself, but God has chosen Solomon. This one mercy is, The king has sent with him Zadok the priest and the rest, and he has given Solomon his more. So Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet has anointed him king at Gion. And they have gone up from there rejoicing, so that the city is in an uproar. This is the noise that you have heard. Also Solomon sits on the throne of the kingdom. And moreover, the king's servant have gone to bless our Lord King David, saying, May the Lord make the name of Solomon better than your name, and may he make his throne greater than your throne. Then the king bowed himself on the bed. Also the king said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has given one to sit on my throne this day. Why may I see it? Now look at it. Everybody left this man alone. The same people that were clapping for him. King, king. So all the guests who were with Adonijah were afraid and rose. Each one went his way. They deny him. Where you exalt yourself, those that follow you, they will run away from you one day. Listen, whatever you gather by exalting yourself, you will lose it. That's what he's showing you. There's somebody desiring to make money so quick and it's not God that gave you. You will lose it. It's not a prayer. It's what will happen. That's, that is just the story that goes on there. It's God that shows men mercy. It's God that lifts men in his own time. Just as there's an elected time, and I told you elected means appointed. There's also an appointed time to the elected. Those appointed have a season of elect election. This is your season. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord find your hearts prepared, humble enough to be exalted. In the name of Jesus. In Amos 7 from verse 12, Amaziah said to Amos, Go, you see her. Flee to the land of Judah. You know Amos is a prophet. There eat bread and there prophesy. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and it is the royal residence. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor was a son of a prophet. You see that? This is what mercy means. Amos was breeding sheep. God found him there and chose him. So he was replying, I was not a rich man, neither was my father a rich man, but God found me and promoted me. That would be your story. Amen. I don't like your amen. amen. See that is it Amos answered. Let, let's see that scripture again. Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor was I a son of a prophet, but I was a sheep breeder and a tender of sycamore fruit. Then the Lord took me as I followed the flock and the Lord said to me, go prophesy to my people Israel. That's how God choose men. That's how God pick men. That is how God appoint men. This season, this will be your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, God will choose you from the lowly place. From the place where you are not known, he will choose you. God will appoint you. He will find you. And he will decorate you. In the name of Jesus. From what to even your disadvantage is an advantage for God. So when you look at your life, there's many question mark. It's because God wants to answer. That thing that makes you think you are not qualified is what qualified you. So instead of crying, you'll be giving thanks. Father, in the sight of men, may I be the most disadvantaged. That should be your prayer. 
in the sight of men, may I be the most foolish. In the sight of men, may I be the most based, despised, that I may be qualified for your appointments. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Talk to him. Don't cry again when they are promoting others and they have not promoted you. You will no longer cry again. When they are selecting others and they have not selected you. When it seems as if age is going against you. It seems as if age was going against Elizabeth. But it was prepared. God elected her that John the Baptist should come through her. When it seemed as if time was going against Sarah, she was elected to be the mother of nations. Look around, I saw the realize that you've been so good to me. Your mercy is everlasting, undenying and overwhelm. Who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you pick my call when I call you? Who am I? That you are mindful of. Who am I that you hear my call? The source of my strength now you. The strength of my life now you. My hope and my joy now you. My confidence. You are the strength of my life now you. You are the source of my strength now you. You are my hope and my joy. Lord, you are my confidence. You are the strength of my life. You are the strength of my life. You are my hope and my joy. You I am the mortal. You are the awesome. I am the mortal. A mortal man, a weak mortal man, to invite the awesome, powerful God to assist them. If he does not find them fragile, faulty, he can't find a place in them. He only begins to find a place in them when there's a vacuum. Nobody can wear a shoe that is already in somebody's feet. You only wear a shoe. That nobody's putting on. If God does not find that vacuum, it cannot come in. The vacuum in your life is a place prepared for God. The weaknesses, the areas that make you look faulty, is a place prepared for God. If He does not find it, then He has not found the man to help. The Lord was destroying the old angel said, and Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. Not because he did anything. Abraham came out of a idol worshiping background, and the Lord just found him one day and said, Come, I want to use you. Get there out of your father's house. It doesn't matter how lost you are, he will find you there. Whether you are in the miry clay, he will locate. 
today. Rehab was in her office of prostitution when he found her. Her office. This season, God is making you laugh. This season, God is shining on you. He only said, let there be light where there was darkness. So the darkness in people's life is to attract his light. sickness in people's life is to attract his healing. The loss in people's life is to attract his restoration. That's why when you read your Bible, you hear restore. Meaning something that was in the store got lost. That's why it's restore. Redeem. Recover. Telling you this season, you will say to your enemies, like Joseph said, You meant it for evil, but God used it to save me and your world. That will be your testimony. taught today. Because that is the faith. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We give you all the glory. We thank you because you always hear us. We thank you because you have made a way thank you because you are intentional in everything you do you are aware you are conscious of what is going on and you are traveling this journey with us we are not alone we are writing your script we are acting your script and the ending of all God's movie always end with I know the thought I think towards you. A thought of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' marvelous name we pray. Jamies for Jesus. Jesus.